Hello guys and welcome back. Um, today's um, playthrough, uh, it looks like we got one codex to read here before we start. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk to some of our companions and head to um, the other DLC. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the codex we're reading today is Dragon. Dragolines, newly hatched dragons, are roughly the size of deer and virtuously hungry. They live for a short time in their mother's lair before venturing out on their own. The slender, wingless creatures are born in vast numbers, as only a few ever make it to adulthood. Uh, high Dragon, a fully mature adult female dragon is the High Dragon, the great monster of legend, the rarest of the Dragon King. These dragons hollow out massive layers for themselves, for they need the space to house their arm of drakes as well as their eggs and their draglings. High dragons are seldom seen. They spend most of their time sleeping and mating, living off the prey their drakes bring back. But once in every hundred years or so, the high dragon prepares for clutching by emergence, emerging from their herd layer and taking wing. She will fly far and wide, eat hundreds of animals, most often livestock, over the course of the few weeks, and leaving smothering devastation in her wake. She then returns to her lair to lay a her eggs and will not appear in the skies again for another century. All right. Whoop. Uh, I still tried to adjust that so it wasn't so... I await loosely. your command. I'd like to ask you something. So... Full of questions, are you? <laughs> so Flemeth is dead. What now? Now I have enough time to study Mother's Grimoire to find a way to prevent her from stealing my body in the future. For she will be back. One day, I have no doubt of that. And if I cannot protect myself, one day I will track her down again in whatever body she inhabits, and she will die again and again if need be. But there is no need to think of such things now. I have you to thank for saving me, so let us return to the task of dealing with the Darkspawn, no? Uh, you know you can always rely on me, right? You... Too much could happen in days to come to make such promises. Uh, Yet, I am grateful. Let us go. There is much to be done before... There is still much to be done. <laughs> I, I wish she would start talking a little bit now and, you know, get you prepared as you turn more and more friends. Because at the end, I know she tries to be um, friendly, but in her own way, she gains as well. Um, and she said, oh, we didn't have enough time. Um, you had plenty of time to tell me, you know, prepare me, you know, get ready for what's going to happen. But she never does. So, all this time we've spent together, you know, the tragedy, the brushes with Ooh, death, the constant pretty. battles with the whole blight looming over us. Will you miss it once it's over? Miss the constant battles or miss you? I know it might sound strange, <laughs> considering we haven't known each other for very long, but I've come to care for you a great deal. I think maybe it's because... We've gone through so much together. I, I don't know. Or maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm fooling myself. Am I? Fooling myself? Or do you think you might ever feel the same way about me? Oh, yeah. We already do. So I fooled you, did I? <laughs> Good to know. Aww. That, that wasn't too soon, was it? Well, she definitely kissed you back, so no, I don't think so. 
Uh, not really. I liked it. Good. I'll take that as a good sign. <laughs> Make his breath, but you're beautiful. I am a lucky man. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to what we were up to before, lest I forget why we're here. I think he already forgot. <laughs> Gosh, you're so cute, Alistair. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? Oh, goodness, when? You know about Alistair and me? It's hard not to notice the doe-eyed looks he gives you, <laughs> especially when he thinks no one's watching. It's almost too sweet for my tastes, and I'm an old lady who should be making lace hearts and fuzzy blankets with animal motifs. So what were you going to say about us? I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Oh, Alistair man. is a fine lad, skilled in battle, but quite inexperienced when it comes to affairs of the heart. I would hate to see him get hurt. Are you saying I might hurt Alistair? Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here, for one or both of you. You are both Grey Wardens, and he is the son of a king. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. I can handle the responsibilities and my relationships. Love is ultimately selfish. It's it not. demands it that one be devoted to a motivation. single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? Uh, yeah, you're making things more dire than they are. Really, Nothing is. is certain. Not in these times. You cannot take anything for granted. I want you to be aware of this. Well, we'll consider what you have said, but I highly doubt we'll end this. <laughs> I am just trying to minimize the suffering that may come to either of you. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. And we will. I know she means right. But Grey Wardens, they're already selfish. They take the taint into themselves and fight Bark Spawn constantly. And to not have love just because you're a Grey Warden and may die young is just so cruel. And they're making the ultimate sacrifice, you know? And later in the games too, they they fall victims to Corypheus and yeah, it's... Everybody deserves love. Something I can help with? I want to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Do you miss anything about Olé? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyo, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Sounds wonderful. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows, of course, there are good things and bad things about Orle, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. Sort of. What sort of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. <laughs> One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orle is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> But the shoes. Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. We can't say we're not uh, girly girls. I love shoes. When I left Orle, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. Um. Wouldn't that be hard to walk in? Yeah, it sounds like it's hard. I wouldn't want to run in it, or have to enter battle, 
But for lounging in a lady's sitting room? Perfect. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Ugh, just look at them. They're comfortable. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? <laughs> Can't say Liliana's not a girly girl. Which is fine by me. Here I am. Uh, care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Why do you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? And you didn't cho choose to join the crows? Mm -hmm. To be truthful, I didn't even know the crows existed when I joined them. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told, which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. <laughs> the crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder, and if you do poorly in your training, you die. And that system works? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect, it gets you wealth, gets you women, and men, or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. It's interesting, okay? So he got sold as boy, trained as assassin, murdered his other assassins, so he couldn't have real friends. And even though he's no longer part of the Crows, at least right now, anyway, um, he still has no remorse for murder because that's how he grew up. Um, it's a very interesting a life assassin is. I think I understand. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. <laughs> for now, naturally, I go where you go. Naturally. And I'm happy to have you along. And here I am, happy to be had. Isn't it wonderful how things work out that way? It does. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. <laughs> Alright, I believe we got dog left. Oh, we got stunned too. <laughs> Just watch him. You are a true warrior and worthy of respect. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe Stan's way over here. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. Callow? You thought I was callow? You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. And why did I let you out of that cage again? I have wondered that myself. It is one of the many things I find puzzling about your behavior. Well, I find plenty of puzzling things about you two. What is there to be puzzled by? I'm a simple creature. I like swords. I follow orders. There's nothing else to know about me. You like swords? Me too. <laughs> I knew there had to be some reason I continue to travel with you. In any case, we should go now. So why did you come to Ferelden? I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. And why would the Kunari care about the Blight? Why do you? I'm a Grey Warden. It's my job. Exactly. You don't ask, nor do I. The Arishok sends me and I go. Don't you have to report back then? Yes. 
When are you going to do that? Never. I cannot go home. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Yes, let's go. As you wish. Blunt to the point with uh, Sten. That's always the best policy. With him. As you say. Let's do this. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Ah, oh, I was waiting for that. It was interesting and draining. Ah, uh, what was that? Did you summon the spirit? I called forth the spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. So you could kill yourself by doing this? Well, um, that's certainly conceivable. I suppose I shouldn't be using that particular trick to entertain children at parties. Yeah, you think? Well, you know, we'll let you decide, you know, because you know yourself as. I promise I'll be careful. And thank you. Your concern is touching. <laughs> Alright, so now that she's glitchy here, let's save here. Let's delete some of these names here. Save. Quickly exit. Resume. And good. shall do it.
The elk brute over here. Very well. Mm -hmm. And off we go. You two are horrible. I fed you. You're not having my breakfast. And here we are. Soldier's Peak. Make us breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the <gasps> tunnels. Uh, Andrasse's blood. How did you find the path on your own? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Um, just, just tell me. It came to me in my dreams. When I was a lad, I tried going through the tunnel by myself. Got horribly lost. But every now and again since, I've dreamt of it. And why didn't you mention this before? I didn't want you to think I was some moon-addled simpleton. I've me wits about me, but enough of that. I'll follow you from a distance. Um. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. And I wonder what Soldier's I think about peak. you now. <laughs> Looks like it's seen better days. Better centuries, more like. Fall back! Fall back already! Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Wardens one chance to die with honor. Instead, they hole up like cowards. We follow the King's advice, then. Starve them out. But the peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. What was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. I've heard an Orlesian ballad about something like this. A beauty trapped in a dream. In the song, Belisa never wakes up. Your prissy friend here is making me nervous, Warden. How is this even possible? The place must truly be haunted. Ah, uh, the veil is thin here. The Circle Tower was that way too. The veil? It's what keeps us from the Fane and demons. Demons? Thank Andraste you came, Warden. After you. I think he said prissy and not pretty. <laughs> the caption said pretty, but I'm pretty sure he said prissy. As you say. As I say, yes. Alright, Codex. And a quest of ancient history. Okay. The History of Soldier Peak, Chapter 1. The Grey Warden's base at Soldier Peak was built in the mid of the glory days, several decades after the Second Blight was ended. Before then, Grey Wardens and Ferelden would take up residence in the castle and forts that belonged to generous nobles. Warren Commander Gaspar Asturian 
desired a fortified headquarters where his forces could train and live. He planned that Soldier's Peak would be a city unto itself. The defeat of the Darkspawn and the Archdemon Zikul was fresh in the minds of the Ferelden people, and many were willing to donate gold to build Commander Osternian's fortress. Soldier's Peak was fully completed within 10 years and dedicated to the Maker in 934 Glory. From the History of Grey Wardens in Ferelden by Brother Jenna TV, Chantry Scholar. There's our brother again. He is everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. The men's morale is low. My spells are of no use in this matter, Commander. There is more to leading men than sorcery, Avernus. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men! I won't lie to you! The situation is grim! Our forces no, outnumbered, so our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging! But we are wardens! Oh, headless. Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns! Archdemons die when they taste our blades. So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I for one will never give up! I for one will More. never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows. So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. <laughs> so brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. Sounds like you got greatness in your blood. Oh, well, that's kind of you to say. Generations of Drydens have said that our stock were lions. Fierce, proud, and noble. But I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. Now there's... Oh, there's somewhere here. There's it. Here. But there is no need to go read them all. It does nothing to the Codex. But if you want to read them on your own time, it's hilarious to me. A letter from Ban Wolf. Sophia, R. Ruhan, and his entire family have been slaughtered, even the children. The Ruhan line is no more, and Arlene belongs to the crown. For now. Arlen believes Rune was plotting against him. Rune criticized the king's spending on Wintersen, that is all. It, it was an ideal word, spoken out of turn. The king goes too far, his brain is filled with madness, and he clings to the crown like a drowning man clutches at a straw. Sophia, I beg you to help us. If nothing is done, more will suffer. Your humble servant, Wolf. from Commander Arthur. Shoulders Peak is more than we bargained for. There is a signature magic at work here. The men are seeing things that cannot tell nightmares from reality. 
The fallen return to life to attack again and again, and we are assaulted by dark creatures, the likes of which I've never seen. Whoever is responsible is intent on destroying us all. The Keen's army and the Grey Wardens both. Send help. We cannot last much longer. Commander Arthon. As you say. It shall be done. be done. It is begun. I shall do it. The door won't hold, Archivist. Almost done. The, the truth must be told. What does it matter? We're dead. Our grand rebellion so close. And to die here, a stillbirth. We never should have done it. Wardens aren't supposed to oppose kings and princes. Should we stand idly by? Another one? Rebellion? What's this about a rebellion? If only the book weren't burned. Maybe there's other records. We can only hope. One moment. Oh, it's just the high schoolers being silly. Okay. Um, the history of Soldier Peak, Chapter 2. As he approaches his 60th year, rumors swirled that the corruption in the Grey Warden and Stern's blood was beginning to take its toll. According to the reports from that time, the commander experienced terrifying waking dreams and heard his name whispered in the dark corners of Soldier Peak. It is said that Austrian would spend hours locked up alone in the great hall of the base, muttering to himself, though no one was ever able to make out what he was saying. Many also believe that Austrian began to in, in secret to draw plans to expand his fortress, adding to it hidden passes, passage, passages and coals, all to protect himself from the shadows that pursued him. No one knows whether Austrian was able to complete his project, for his derivation be had become obvious to anyone who spent any m amount of time with him. He quickly replaced by Warden Commander Frida Helwick. Austrian was taken to Ozamar, where he submitted to the calling, the last rite of the Grey Wardens, and went to his death with honor. From the history of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden by Jen TV, the Chantry Scholar. You're all right. We're just being noisy. High school kids and honking their horns. They have a game tonight, so come on, get up there. Alright, let's do a quick save here. Well, not a quick save, but a save save. One moment. Get down there! Hey! Don't Make you go up there! Make the for every inch, man! Hold the flank! Avernus, we need you! 
Nelate Obrasuth Sifan Nit Bekon Contraste's blood! What? More Avernus! Whatever it takes! Take me a Ventosus Victos! I command you, fight the king's men! Fool! So much death, suffering, and oh yes, blood! The veil is torn now. Your soul is mine, Avernus! Acolytes, retreat now! The battle is lost! What just happened? Oh no, more fighting. The Warden summoned demons. Can't believe it. And my grandmother, she knew. Uh, wardens don't forbid blood magic. Anything to take win. I believed that my family was better than that. But answers <gasps> may lay you up, up too, ahead. <sighs> Seriously, these dogs. It shall be done. Okay. I don't think that's as good as what that has got. Wait, that's not. Okay. Shall do it. It shall be done. The History of Soldier Peak, Chapter 3. After its death, the rumors and the theories became increasingly outlandish. One of the more ridiculous rumors told of Arthur's infatuation with the Elven Prince pr Princess of Lore whom he was trying to resurrect in a secret ritual chamber through the use of blood magic and the princess's favorite food, raspberry jam. Warden Commander Phil Hanwick launched a thoroughly investigation into Arzen's secret plans, but was unable to discover any evidence that anything in Soldier Peak had been changed. Commander Hanwick declared that the rumors about Austrian was a sight on his memory, and that anyone found repeating those wood would be harshly punished. The stories were thus silenced. From the History of Grey Wardens and Peraldon by Brother Gender TV Chant Grey Scholar Level up Here we go. Step no further! Get this annoyance away from me! This one would speak with you. Uh, why would I speak with you, demon? Because this peak is mine. This one is the Dryden, Commander, Sophia. <laughs> All these things. Grandmother? You have slain many of the demon ilk to get here. This one would propose a deal. 
Lovey, I'm afraid your great-great-grandmother is possessed. That or she's really let herself go. My great-great-grandmother is dead. I don't know what that is. Is there anything real of Sophie left inside you? This one has tasted her memories, seen her thoughts and hidden places. Yuck. But she is food for this one. This no more, die. no less. Uh, I've heard enough. Die, demon. Fool! Uh, no. Things should have unusual powers. Be wary. <laughs> I don't think he normally sees anything, but we'll try. As this armor guy is in my way, do you see anything of this? And he doesn't. Ah, oh, what a shame. Very well. Alright, Sophie Dryden's journal. 21 Elipsista. It is done. The nobles have thrown their lot in with the Arlen. Arlen, the snot nosed man child. Arlen, who did not walk till he was in his 50th year. Arlen, who had to be pried off his nursemaid's breast not two years ago, or so it was, is whispered. The Tans and the Owls believe him to be a sentimenton and easily led, but I have seen something in the boy's eyes and it terrifies me. Ten Marlaris. I watched the summer day possessions from a room high in the Fort Draken. The regent has me for treason when my only guilt is being true to my country and my heart. My guard's tongue was easy to loosen with a gift of ruby ring, and I am told that the bands are fighting against my sentence. I shall pray, but not hope that it, it would be anything but the gallows for me. To Fenris, the drought was like a bitter fire, but I survived. Weep for me, for I survived. Would that they had made a clean end for me? I should have died a lady, the greatest of the Drydens, not live to become this, nothing, this monstrous thing. Nineteen monstrous, matronalis. Enough, I shall not waste no more time with wretched, or wretched, womanishly lamentation. Death would have been easy, but fate saw fit to spare me, and I will seize upon this chance. The Grey Wardens are an army. And the old commander is weak, a wisp of a man. I will aspire the Grey Wardens, and the Arlen will rule will rule the day he spared my life. Selected entries from the journals of Warden Commander Sophia Dryan. Because I could not get anywhere with you guys. Okay. 
Awareness, awarenesses, no. The taint allows us to sense the dark spot. The longer we survive the taint in our blood, the more potent it becomes. Unfortunately, this corruption will eventually overwhelm the Grey Wardens. Over time, it devours both mind and body, leaving, a, leaving nothing. But what if we spread of the corruption could be stopped and contained in some way? What if the Wardens could become more powerful without having that power kill him? How great would that power be? Would it be enough to stop the demons? The joining ritual is crude. We take into ourselves the blood of a dark spawn in the most obvious ways. Most die from the corruption immediately. It is, after all, poison. There must be some way to refine the joining. Isolate the true power that is found in the dark spawn blood and leave behind the evil that kills us. I can feel the corruption starting to take its toll on my body. I must not succumb. There is too much work to be done. Through my magic, I've been able to slow its inevitable spread, but not stop it completely. I'm starting to hear things, even while awake. A voice, more beautiful than any other, that calls to me from the depths. In my dreams, I see the Black City, and I am drawn towards it. There is something there, an answer to what this taint is, this taint that we share with the dark spawn, from the notes of Avernus. It shall be done. This appears to be an old research of the mage Avernus. They detail a series of experiments in Tars clinical handwriting. Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered <coughs> nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more, or a dozen, the things I could do. Yeah. That was intriguing, huh? Continue. It's a promise to unlock the potential, potential of the tainted taint in your... Uh, taint blood you drink during the journey. Uh, joining. Uh, drink the vial. I like the little gulp. I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. <coughs> Even now the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance? I know your crimes, Avernus. You are a monster. A monster? For a hundred years, I have fought them, thought by thought, spell by spell. If I am a monster, it is because I must be one. Careful. This man has dabbled in matters forbidden by the Maker. He may look frail, but don't trust him. So the Maker told you that, did he? Short-sighted men have forbidden my research, not any god. <laughs> Enough. Why are you here? What is your intent? Uh, I've seen your experiments. They were necessary. Any tool, any iota of information that could defeat the fell demons was justified. As a warden, you should know that. Necessary. Having to relieve yourself after an eight-hour ride is necessary. But there's no excuse for summoning demons. <sighs> Charming. Isn't it? <laughs> see here. Uh, how do you know I'm a warden? 
A combination of my research and blood magic. Could be my outfit. But even without that, who else would brave Soldier's Peak? Um, I, I want some answers. To what questions, I wonder? Ask. Sophia's great great or Sophia's great grandson brought me here. Let me go ahead. Master Mage, uh, sir, my family name has been worth less than dirt for over a century. Do you have any proof that Sophia was a hero? The boy who braved the mists. So you heeded my call. <laughs> and you are a Dryden. The cosmos has a sense of humor. Your call? He was but a boy when he entered the tunnels below the peak. His heart pure, his character certain. In dreams, I gave him the keys he would need. He would be my deliverance. Um, just answer Lepi's question. Your great-great-grandmother was the best of us. Brave, charismatic, fiery, utterly devoted to the fight. But still we lost. We fought against a tyrant, you know, so full of vigor then, so blind to consequence. But proof? There's none to be had. I'm sorry, Levy. I... Uh, I had hoped. But thank you, Warden. Um, let's see... How'd you survive the many years? The Chantry foolishly forbids blood magic. But there are so many secrets to uncover. As my body decayed, I found ways to extend it. But that can only go so far. What was the purpose of your experiments? To stop the demonic tide, to correct the miscalculations of the past. Blood magic comes from demons. They could counter every bit of law I knew. But the darkspawn taint, that is alien to them. And it has power. Uh, what power? The Wardens use it merely to sense darkspawn. A triviality. My research has discovered so much more. Hinted at even greater heights. This knowledge could not only save Soldier's Peak, with it the Wardens could grow even more powerful. Oh, this is Ron. You know better than the demons. I have done what I must. But let me undo my greatest of mistakes. Let me cleanse this place. Then, then I will accept whatever justice you feel I merit. Mm. I want to ask you something else. Yes? Tell me what happened here. What use would storytelling serve? The tyrant Arland is long dead, as is all our noble co-conspirators and the Grand Rebellion. Sophia's corpse may walk and talk, but she too is no more. How was Arland a tyrant? He ruled with fear and poison, his treachery pit noble against noble in terrible battle. We thought him a monster. We gathered allies to rebel. But the toll of years has erased our failure, hasn't it? It seemed so pressing then. But the kingdom lives on. Uh, what happened to the rebellion? Too many mouths to quiet. Even sorcery can only go so far. So we met with Tian Kuzland. With him on our side, we had a chance of victory. Instead, the King's Guard ambushed us. Commander Dryden and I barely escaped. The Kuzlans almost rebelled. That's my family. Is it? You lost many family members that day. I saw the Tian's head on the meeting table with an apple in its muff. Arlen's butchers, oh, no doubt, slaughtered enough Kuzlans to make them pliable. Why did you leave the Grey War or the Wardens to die? I had considered the possibility of failure. But so many demons breaking free was more catastrophic than I had postulated. But my course was clear. I had to get to safety to contain the demonic threat. I took only those who would not impede my goal. Time for questions over. 
So be it. My only request, if justice or vengeance drive you, stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. Until the demons are dead, we are allies. That will do for now. We must go to the Great Hall. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. <laughs> Come. It shall be done. The History of Soldier Peak, Chapter 4. There was one mystery, however, that persists. And this mystery perplexed even the Commander Henrik herself. When Commander Austin went to his calling in the Deep Roads, he did not have in his hands his sword, Austin's might, forged for him by Dwarven Smith, and presented to him upon completing of Soldier's Peak. Nor did he pass the sword on to his successor, or to any other Grey Warden. While some maintained that Austrians had simply destroyed the sword in his dotage, others believe he stashed it away somewhere in Soldier's Peak. One young warden claimed that Austrian had at once grabbed him by the shoulders, fixed him with an unwavering gaze, and said, The sword will remain, remind you what it is, it is to be a warden. Speak your oath to me. When the shadows come, you must speak the words. What this was supposed to mean was never made clear. The history of Grey Wardens and Ferelden by Brother Janet TV, Scholar Chantry. Okay. Oops, had it paused. All the way, Luffy. Thing. I always name my dog Park Spot. <laughs> so corny. <laughs> but also lovely. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm randomly talking to my sick daughter, apparently. We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. Uh, what do I do? I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. They're coming. And it's glitchy. Fantastic. Alright guys. Give me one moment. 